All right. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful, awakening, transformative planet of ours. This is Metaphysical Mocha Monday. I am your, oh my goodness, I totally just did. This is Metaphysical Meetup with Mark. I have done Metaphysical Meetup, um, Metaphysical Mocha Mondays uh, for so long. I think it's just more just habit. So I better uh, grab my coffee, uh, get get into the moment, but welcome to Metaphysical Meetup with Mark, which is now on Fridays at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, and I'm here in Seattle, Washington, so Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, which I did for many years, used to be on Mondays at 8 a.m., and um, we had to do a change because my schedule, my, my day job all changed about six months ago, um, and so I have Fridays now off. And so I still wanted to connect with you and do community on Fridays and a little bit later at 10 a.m. So how's everybody doing? Uh, let me just give you a shout out real quick. Let me see who's on the video with us today. <clears throat> we're going to be talking about um, the, the year of the eight. So we're in the year of the eight. Uh, if you follow my YouTube channel right now, you can go over to my YouTube channel, which is uh, one of the things that I'm going to be doing in 2024 is um, the previous week will be uploaded to YouTube and will air on Fridays over on my YouTube channel right now. So you can go over there. Uh, you can get that link right here at marklinghart.com. That's broadcasting uh, my, my psychic predictions and forecasts for 2024. Uh, that's going over on my YouTube channel right now. Uh, so you can always subscribe to that and catch that either live, um, the live preview, or you can um, catch it after here. Um, and then this show next week will then upload to YouTube next week. So we're, we're talking about the year of the eight. So right now, 2024 from a numerology standpoint uh, is taking the numbers and adding them up. Uh, so if you add up, uh, you know, two plus zero plus two is four, add another four is eight. And the year of the eight represents <clears throat> a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But in a numerology study, which I've been studying numerology for several years now, and I've always been fascinated with numerology just for the fact it's one of the many tools that I use on my spiritual pathways, on my spiritual journey, on my spiritual understanding, working with metaphysics, working with psychic, working with intuition, working with mediumship, if you will. And we have talked about numerology several times. We, we've been able to date back about 11,000 years as far as mathematics go uh, of our um, using the tools of numerology, which Pythagorean. If you understand mathematics, Pythagorean's theorem, he always said that that mu music <clears throat> and, and numbers, mathematics, were cousins to one another because music is just a series of notes put together to create a musical, you know, uh, communication, if you will, right? Because um, music moves most people in the world. Music has a connection, a vibration, a uh, a, a deeper understanding, right? And numerology is part of mathematics, and mathematics. Uh, is used to help us understand our world. Um, you know, based on, I, I personally believe that, you know, when we finally have full disclosure that we're not alone in the universe, it'll be through mathematics. It won't be through language. It won't be, it might be through tones or vibrations um, that, you know, Nikola Tesla talked about all the time, all the time. If you want to unlock the secrets of the universe, you have to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. I, I think when we realize that we're not alone in the universe, it will come through more of a understanding of technology and mathematics, not English, Spanish, French, um, Russian, Italian. <clears throat> it won't be a, a language because this is just a language based off of vib which technically is a vibration off a of vocal cord right here, right? So um, we're talking about the eight today, and I'm going to want to give you one of my um, favorite quotes that um, goes back to World War II. Uh, and a lot of what I've been seeing for the year of the eight is actually quite positive. Uh, if you if you catch my uh, my newsletter will be coming out and I'll have that video on my newsletter, Soul Adventure. So if you haven't yet um, signed up for that, uh, it's a good way to stay in touch uh, with the predictions. And what one of the things I did is I used my own um, meditations and um, seeing uh, to see what was coming for this year. But I also asked, I got into AI and I asked AI because it's kind of a, a an algorithm of using our technology to see what's ahead. And it was interesting on some of the things that AI was able to, uh, to share what it predict. Now it says, it always says from a disclaimer, this is a prediction. This isn't a fact. This isn't, 
you know, ever going to be a hundred percent accurate, which I, you know, understand that, but it was just curious to be able to say, now we have tools like the internet, like our smartphones. Um, and now we have AI, uh, which is going to, uh, incorporate into our reality. Now for some that's, uh, enlightening for others. That's a uh, uh, scary as shit. Uh, I get that. Um, I don't think Terminator, I don't think, uh, you know, the end of the world, uh, because it's not a sentient conscious construct yet. doesn't mean that in the future it wouldn't be. It's just usually with technology, whether it's the internet, uh, whether it's um, AI, it's just put in the, the, the wrong hands, people that, you know, want power, or greed, or, you know, humans, right? So, um, but I actually see this year as a very transformative year. And what I mean by that, just from my studies, my meditations, uh, our conversations I've had uh, when I'm traveling um, or when I um, or when I did travel, I'm not traveling much anymore uh, right now. Uh, but what the conversations that we have um, in group, um, it, it's been very fascinating to get different perspectives from people that all can feel like there's something coming. It's very palpable, if you will. And uh, we're not sure exactly what it is, but that's the, that's the whole journey of life, right? Is, is uh, you know, the unknown, if you will. But the, the quote that I love, and it goes back to World War II, because I feel like a little bit of what we're going through in our history is kind of repeating itself. And Mark Twain always talked about, you know, history doesn't repeat itself exactly the same way but it has a rhyme and a rhythm to it. And I feel like what we're witnessing here in the United States and, you know, even just being out of the country last month, um, getting a lot of conversations and perspective from people all around uh, the UK and Europe was what's going to happen with the United States. And I personally believe it's going to be something we haven't seen before from the political standpoint uh, to the way this country is going from a democracy and constitutional standpoint to the Supreme court Um it's not going to align with everybody, right? Because that's, you know, we can see that we're already divided. Uh, but I actually see progression. I, I see through turbulence. I see through chaos um, what the caterpillar called the end of the world. The butterfly calls a new beginning. Um, and that's what I see for our world. But it, it does remind me, I'll be honest, it does remind me of, um, you know, 1930s Germany um, with what was going on with the uh, their constitution and their their politicians and their democracy and, uh, you know, people forget from history that um, Hitler was an elected politician. So, you know, there's uh, some, some rhyme and rhythms that are taking place, but one of the quotes that really helps me to get through besides the, uh, the serenity prayer, because there's a lot of things in our world that we can't control. All we can do is control how we respond to the world is, um, you know, the serenity prayer, the prayer of St. Francis Assisi are two of the prayers uh, that I um, go to a lot of times based when I wake up and see the world. I don't really pay attention anymore to the, the news cycles, media cycles, uh, just for the fact it's just so sensationalized and so negative and so fear-based. Um, I'll tune in just to see if the world's still functioning. Uh, but I use those two prayers to pray and hold space for other people. Uh, to, you know, have that serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the, and the courage and the wisdom, the courage for the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. But one of my quotes that I always come back to is from Sir Winston Churchill. And during this time, um, you know, whether you like him or hate him based on, you know, history, uh, this, this, this gentleman uh, who was um, a tremendous force of his time to be able, I don't know the world would be the same way without Winston Churchill in it, to be honest with you, as one of the main um, chess players uh, on this game of chess. And that's what this is. It's a matrix. It's a game of chess. But he always said, quote, fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. And what I would say for today's metaphysical meetup with Mark um, on Fridays, not metaphysical meetup on Mondays, with, uh, um, is to come back to that word fear. What does fear mean for you? Um, for me, every time I see fear or anything that's fear-based or fear-driven, for me, it's false evidence appearing real, and I will choose to face everything and rise. And facing everything is not always easy. I'm doing that right now um, outside of my consulting and my spiritual practice and radio show. I am dealing with some pretty uh, nasty people and some, you know, not such great situations, but that's the fear base that's trying to go down that path, and that's just false evidence appearing real. And I, I always choose that courage is a decision, the courage to move forward into the unknown. 
And some of you may be feeling that. Some of you may be feeling that uncertainty, that unknown. Like I said, it's palpable. We know something's coming. We're just not sure what it is. Um, but I see it as the year of the eight, the infinity, the infinity is of something of great abundance, something of great um, karmic energy. It's also, you know, because think about this, in, the, the, the infinity. So eight turned sideways represents infinity, journey in, journey out. And so a lot of times energy sent out, energy returns. Um, I don't think karma is necessarily, uh, she can be a bitch, of course, but that karmic energy is what goes out, returns, right? So if you're putting a, a lot of negative stuff out, that negative stuff returns. If you're putting a lot of positive stuff out, that positive returns. I don't think it actually has a good or bad uh, narrative to it. It's all subjective based on your experiences. But that energy of return is what the eight represents. So you tilt the eight sideways, it becomes infinity. It also represents manifestation. The word manifestation brings things into our reality. It also represents abundance, things that can return. And I, I feel that the way that this year is going to be, it's going to be a year of um, abundance from, you know, from a financial standpoint to an economy standpoint to a democracy standpoint. There's going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to work through, which are going to be hard to witness and watch. And I always say, wait, watch and witness. Don't take my word for it. Uh, but, you know, there's uh, you can go back to my previous predictions the last few years when I follow the numerology pathway. Uh, the eight is all about manifesting and bringing things into our reality. Now, one of the things that's taken place that I just watched uh, in December uh, was quantum computing, right? Quantum computing is a quantum computer that can analyze at such a fast rate of speed that it needs to be cooled at such a low, low temperature, minus one, I want to say like minus 120 to keep the servers. Uh, but the IBM just released its first quantum computing, and this is going to help to unlock with the coordination of artificial intelligence, AI, this is going to start to unlock some of the things in, in, in long-held secrets of physics and uh, the advancement of our technologies and medicine and philosophy and communications. You know, I was, uh, I took my, um, I was over um, for the first time in, uh, back in England in early December to study at one of my favorite colleges. You can't see it, but up here in my studio, there's a picture of the college. In the United States, we call it Hogwarts. The locals there in Stansted called Spook College. How do I know this? Because I have a cousin that lives five minutes, a third cousin that I met through Ancestry.com that lives about 10, five, 10 minutes from the college. And she, they always said the locals would call it Spook College, but it's the, the college is called Arthur Finley uh, after the gentleman who left his entire state to the Spiritual National Union, the SNU of, of the UK. And uh, it's it's a beautiful, uh, just, uh, I'm not sure how many acres it is. It's, it's pretty big, uh, but it's an old calendar house. So the calendar house was designed after the, uh, the the days, the months, the weeks, and the year, and that's how the, the, the architecture was actually designed. And I had gone there every year for over a decade um, to study, to learn, to grow, to transform, to heal. And this time when I went <clears throat> was more for healing on, on what I do from a mediumship standpoint. I didn't do any readings, which was fantastic for the first time. I did one reading, I did, I did a demonstration in the library, but that was it. Um, and it was nice to have a different um, concept of that that journey, but traveling there to understand these different concepts. And one of the things that came out of this from a scientific standpoint, and this is fascinating to me, and I've always been, if you follow my work, you know that I've always been curious. My mom would actually validate that, that I've always been curious um, of the world, of the unknown um, since I was a little boy. And that manifested again into my reality at the age of 27, when my brothers and my father-in-law all died and made their transition. It really changed me. A lot of the work that I do, the shows, the books, I don't even have my book up. I can't even, I can't even plug my own book right now. Um, I can plug this book though. If you like books, this is a, this was just sent to me. Thank you, Rosie. Uh, the Art of Living by Thich Nhat Hanh. I've done a, I did a dedicated podcast to this gentleman. Fascinating read, The Art of Living. Uh, so we're going to be uh, uh, getting deep into this book. I have a whole stack of books I got to get through. Um, but it was, um, you know, it was, it was about manifesting my own consciousness of death and dying. And then I had a near-death experience, an NDE. Then I had an OBE, an out-of-body experience. And then my experiences with plant medicine has really just expanded my mind and my curiosities, right? So a lot of the work that I do, the readings, the shows, we're back on the air next Wednesday for an, uh, the eighth season. Again, the eighth season, the number eight is aligning. Um, to our eighth season of Inspired Living Radio, where we already have guests booked out through March, April. I'm looking forward to talking to these, these wonderful, amazing 
uh, curious people like myself. So again, you can get all the information here at marklaneheart.com. Uh, the, the, the podcast is now ranked uh, in the top inspirational podcast to follow. And there's a list of, I think about 90 and we're somewhere in the forties. So just nice to be mentioned in that, that same conversation and be on the same page as people like Brene Brown, Steve Harvey, Michelle Obama, uh, Oprah. Um, you know, these are very inspirational people, whether you agree with it or not, I'm not going to get into the politics of that because I just said the name Michelle Obama and some people, Oh, the Obama's, the Clintons, the, the Trumps. Uh, don't pay it. Don't follow that circus. That's just a monkey show. It's a circus show. It's a politics are such an illusion now and you can see it for what it is and i think that's going to tie into our year the year of abundance the year of manifesting if you look around in my studio whether it's star wars or it's my my message in pens uh the dice from the millennium, the millennium falcon these singing bowls these are all manifestations of somebody else's ideas and creations that have come into my reality and in the year of the eight we're going to manifest some pretty big things uh, you know, um, I've always said full disclosure is just going to happen in our decade of the roaring 20s. Uh, I think we're going to see some uh, pretty big shifts in the United States from a global standpoint and from a political standpoint, something we haven't seen before historically. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I see it as abundance. I see it as abundance, not from a cash flow, not from a money standpoint, right? Because think about this. We're the only species on the planet that will go and chop a tree down, turn that tree into paper, and then actually write the write on the paper and stick it to a tree, save the trees, right? It's just the ignorance of that. It's the abundance is going to be more than cash. The abundance is going to be something of knowledge and awareness and transformation. That's what this year is going to bring. And, you know, even if I, even if I go to my, uh, my little charts here on the A, I'll just open up and I'll just pick a few words right out of my uh, charts from the eight. <clears throat> Some of the strengths of the eight, organized, authoritative, pioneering, right? The eight strengths, the eight energy. And how do I know this? Because I'm a life path. Eight. So I'm excited for this year, not just because of what I see coming from a very positive standpoint. The last few years have been rough, y'all, from a pandemic to uh, just divide and unease and to wars and to famines and to homelessness. Um, there's a lot that we've gone through. And I believe that's actually teeing us up for something that's better. Uh, so pioneering is one of the words that come to the eight energy, right? Um, Self-motivated, dependable, tenacious, strong, driven, fair are all words associated with the eight energy, hardworking. So again, you know, putting, you know, what you put out, you get, you know, what you put in, you get out, right? So eight is the number of money, career, and manifestation. So I, I do see that the year of the eight is going to be a very interesting year for us. But again, it, it's, it's going back to that quote from Sir Winston Churchill, where we talk about um, fear is a reaction. And, there, and fear is so much driven in today's society through media, through your phone, through your social media constructs. Like we always try to create a platform here for positivity. And whether it's my TikTok, my YouTube, my Facebook, my Instagram, anything at marklanehart.com. It's all about positivity and finding the diamond within. So fear is that reaction, false evidence appearing real, shut that down because there is real fears in life. Again, the three fears that you're going to do in a real fear, fear based situation is fight, flight, or freeze. That's the nervous system. That's the human response. Everything outside of that is created right here in our mind and felt right here in our heart, right? So fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. And I hope that you'll all join me this year to have courage. And to make that decision to face everything and rise, because that does take courage. Like Sir Winston Churchill, who said, who said the quote, fear is a reaction, courage is a decision. And it's funny, because I, did, I didn't think I was going to talk about this today. And a lot of my shows are not scripted. I don't have notes. It's just kind of what comes through from my meditation, or talking with group, or what I see through the week. And it's, you know, um, it, it's a point of our journey. It's a tipping point to where we can really start to manifest and have abundance and have that karmic energy start to replace the bad things and the negative things that have happened in your life or in society or whatever your perspective is. But the, the eight energy also with every strength does have its weaknesses, right? And some of the weaknesses, um, egotistical, domineering, greedy, prone to worry, poverty, consciousness, intolerant, superficial, intimidating. So we will still see the balance of light and dark in the year of the eight. We will still see the strengths and the, and the weaknesses of what we do. 
but for the eight, it's always like the biz, the business minded leader. So if you've been thinking about opening a, a business or going into business, this would be a great time to uh, align to that. So let me go over to the Facebook page here. Uh, bear with me here. Uh, good morning to my team. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Where's Facebook here? Facebook. So when I get on Facebook, I can then see the, the live feed. Um, let me just see where we're at here. Good morning to my Diamond Hub subscribers. And I have an announcement for y'all. Uh, let me go over to the Intuitive Prospect page. So um, after we end today, if you're one of my Patreon prospectors, uh, again, the link is right here. Just go to marklanehart.com and subscribe. Um, I'm going to be opening up the Zoom room um, at 1130, uh, from 1130 to 12 and from 3. So if you can't make the first session, there's a morning session, 1130 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And for my Patreon prospectors and my subscribers and members, uh, the, on the first Friday of every month now, so today is the first Friday, the 5th of 2024, I will be opening up the Zoom room and those links are on the Patreon page. Uh, and I, I don't know if I'll put them here, uh, but if you are if you wanna become a Patreon member, uh, it's a way to get readings every month. And so at the beginning of each month, you'll have an opportunity to come into the Zoom room or you can call in on the phone, it doesn't matter, um, to get your reading, discussions, Q&A. It's called the Q&A community. And it'll be um, two sessions on Zoom at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'll just open up the room. If you want a healing, if you want a reading, could be mediumship, could be psychic, I'll leave it up to you uh, as part of your benefits package. Uh, and actually, I just got an alert, Q&A community, Patreon prospect, there's 11.30. Uh, and then again at three. So if you can't make the morning session based on where you're at in the world, because I have patrons from all over the world, if you can't make that morning session, there'll be another one for a half hour, half hour to an hour, depending on who shows up for, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So one in the morning, one in the afternoon, first Friday of every month that has now been set up if you wanted to join me. If you're a Diamonds Hub subscriber or Star Sender here, then I usually will give you a free reading, um, but I hope that you'll join me. So um, I'm going to leave some of the life lessons for the eight and what the year of the eight holds ahead of us, but I do want to give a shout out. This cup was given to me uh, by Jane uh, over in Wales, and what's really cool is um, there's a button here right here. And so when you're drinking it, let me pull the cap off. I just got water in it right now because I'm a little coffeeed out. But I don't know if you can see it. But what will happen is you press the button. There you go. And what happens is it stirs your coffee. So you can be sitting here and it starts to spin your coffee. So she got that as a gift. So thank you, Jane, for that. Um, one of my students in my development group and was able to finally meet her for the first time in person because she's been in group for about three years and has always been online. So any, anytime I travel, I try to coordinate with people uh, that are my students or you know, my followers or, you know, part of the community and try to meet them face to face and have, you know, a pint or a cup of coffee. And so she brought me this. So thank you again, Jane. And I said I would I would showcase it for everybody. Uh, just a cool mug and then you press this little yellow button. And the force meets the water. <laughs> so thank you for that. So again, uh, I hope that you'll uh, think about in 2024, uh, getting on uh, my Patreon prospectors membership page or subscribing here to the Diamonds Hub. Uh, that you just click on the link in the description um, or go to marklanehart.com. Uh, it's called the Diamonds Hub. It's four dollars and ninety nine cents. It's in a great. It's a great way to get you know just you know more connections with me. Because I was just I was just doing too much in the years past, and you know the people love their free stuff. That people people will take take take. So I had to create more of a, a balance, if you will. So again, uh, this is all about today's show, and what I do is based on my own awakening, my own curiosity, and it's all about empowering you. It's about community. Again, community that word unity. Uh, it's about encouragement, having courage, and in, in encouraging you to move past fear. Uh, for what the year holds. I know that there's, there's a lot of uncertainties that are still happening and unfolding every day. Uh, but I, you know, I come back to one of the, the predictions and forecasts I did when I was talking, you know, almost four years ago about, you know, a, another war coming to America, another civil war, which, you know, it's going to happen. It's just human nature, but also the great coming together. Uh, something where, you know, history teaches us about 70% of the population will move forward but 30% will not. 30% want to control the 70%. You see some of that going on right now, right? So um, 
it's just it's a, it's an interesting journey uh, for everything that's going on. But also remember that this is somewhat of an illusion too, right? And you won't understand that until you've had your own perspective, like I've had and my experiences, and you know, losing my brothers like I did to murder and brain cancer, quite transformative. Something something triggered in my mind. Some can say it was awakening. Others can call it you know losing your mind. Maybe it's a combination of both. I don't know. But then my father-in-law to MS, my own near-death experience, my own out of body experience, and then the journey of healing to be able to go uh, and travel to uh, colleges and to meet different people from around the world and work on metaphysics. And one of the concepts that I didn't, that I, I kind of glossed over, I got, I forgot to go back to, was at the college we talked about, it was the 21st century of mediumship, healing mediumship. And we talked about scientific, you know, the, the SNU, the Spiritual National Union and science actually work together, uh, which I find truly fascinating because a lot of religions won't work with science because science wants to de debunk religion and religion doesn't trust scientists, right? So, <clears throat> you know, with the scientific aspect, we talked about from a mathematical standpoint, from a numerology standpoint, mathematics, the scientific method, only about 4% of the scientific community of what we truly know to be true, only about 4% can actually be confirmed by mathematical equation, the scientific method. So if you think of in terms of 100%, that means about 96% we don't understand or we can't actually prove as fact, right? It can be theory. It can be hypothesis. It can be an opinion, right? But we always say you're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your fact, right? Because there's only one set of facts. But today's world would say there's two sets of facts, right? But it's interesting because when we started talking about that from a scientific standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, from a metaphysical standpoint, that's 96% that we don't have an awareness to or an understanding to. So think about that world. Think about the ocean. The ocean is 70% water, right? We live on a, on a planet that's majority of water right? We breathe water in the, in the womb, but we only understand about seven to 10%. Numbers fluctuate depending on the studies, but seven, I'll even say seven to 15% of understanding the life and the unknown in our own oceans. Um, that's a big percentage of what we don't know, right? Or what's deep in our earth. We understand aspects, but we don't go as a diver. I'm, I'm always thinking about this. There are places I've gone where there's no humans, right? Even in forests and deep, you go up North Canada. There are places on the planet where there is, you know, Alaska, um, Antarctica. There are places on this planet there are no humans, right? Um, deep down in the oceans, deep down in the earth, parts of, you know, places that are not covered in water. And there's just a lot of things that we don't know. The year of the eight is going to start to unlock some of these things of curiosities, these things as humans, because we've always been curious by nature to explore, to dream, to discover. And a big a part of my philosophy that I teach on and who I am as the intuitive prospector is to dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live and discover the diamond within. And I, I will be doing a lot more of that in 2024. And again, the, the unknowns are going to start to manifest into our reality. If you follow my work, you know that I've always said that full disclosure would not come through media or our government. I've worked for government for 23 years, y'all. And trust me, the government is not going to tell you the truth. They violate the Constitution every single day with the secrets that they hold and the, and the, and the uh, transparency of information they don't show you. I've been behind the curtain. I've been a part of that world for 23 years. I've seen it. I'm an expert of it. I can speak to it. And I can tell you that the government violates the Constitution every single day for disclosure. And it won't come full disclosure of being alone in the universe or being alone on this planet. Because again, it doesn't have to be little green men. Like I've always said, it doesn't have to be little green men that come from outer space from a far away distance. It can be something that's been right here the whole time, deep in our oceans, deep in our, our earth, camouflage for, you know, not to be aware, not made into, brought into awareness because there are people every single day that are having experiences. I can say that, but until you've had your own experience, it's hard to connect to because I didn't until I had my first experience back in uh, 1999 down in uh, Puerto Rico, uh, the tip of the Bermuda Triangle. Didn't talk about it for years, but I'm, I'm comfortable to talk about it now because it tells us that there's so much of our world that we don't understand. And to move, make that fear in your mind, make fear a choice, but let courage become your decision to change false evidence from appearing real, to face everything and rise and, and, and go to find that dime within, to, to chase those uh, curiosities, if you will. Uh, because there's just a lot from a scientific standpoint, 96% we don't understand, our world we don't understand, 
And in the year of the eight, it just feels from my meditations and my visions and my writings and my conversations that there's going to be some big abundance and some big manifestations that are going to take place this year. And like I said, what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the butterfly calls the new beginning, right? So it's going to be based on your own perspective. But some of the life lessons in the year of the eight, some of the things to remember to balance, especially if you're a life eight like myself, to balance the material and the spiritual worlds. I feel like that's really where I'm at now in my journey and my career and in, in my age and the experience I've had is really the balancing of the material matrix world and the illusion and the spiritual world. That's very much, very, very real and very much accessible if you choose to, because it'll always be based on your free will and your choice to recognize the illusionary nature of the material world. Fascinating, right? Think of matrix. I just, I was just having a conversation with my uh, counselor, Tom, who's awesome dude. We meet uh, every few weeks and he's in the DR Dominican Republic. And we were talking about when I saw the matrix movie, you ever seen the movie matrix? It's a fantastic movie. It kind of, <laughs> kind of opens your mind up. I actually had to see it twice before I actually understood it. If I'm being honest, uh, fight club, same thing. I had to, I watched it. I was like, Pulp Fiction, same thing. Uh, even the one I just watched, Leave the World Behind on Netflix. You either love it or you hate it, but there's a lot of people. It's getting in a lot of controversy. When I first watched it the first time, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like it. I was like, seriously, this is how it's going to end? Come on. I won't give any, I won't spoil for you if you haven't seen it yet. But I'd say pay attention to all the Easter eggs, all the shirts, the, 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 the paintings on the back wall, the things that are all around them. There's so many Easter eggs to it. And then I went and watched it the second time. Probably helped not to have jet lag because I had pretty good jet lag when I watched it in England. Um, it kind of popped like, oh, okay, I can see how this goes. That's why it's gaining so much traction and also controversial, right? Because it is, it's to recognize the illusionary, the illusionary, just like time is an illusion, right? We're the only species on the planet that pays to live here creates our own fear, drama, and worry, and measures our life by time. We celebrate a birthday going around the sun. Think about that. We go around the sun once a year, and we celebrate that, right? Birthdays, if you go back, you know, year, hundreds of years ago, people didn't remember how old they were because they weren't counting that, right? It wasn't until later in civilization that we started, oh, let's have birthdays. Because if you have birthdays, that means you buy stuff, you celebrate. I'm not saying don't celebrate, celebrate, but do you have to celebrate with a bunch of stuff that you don't get to take with you, Right. So it's, it's really to recognize not just the illusionary nature of the material world, the matrix, if you will, but time, right? We measure our life by time, but also to adapt an attitude of abundance. So this also comes directly to you to start moving into where I think there's going to be an abundance from a spiritual standpoint. And the abundance isn't just based on money. It's based on health. It's based on relationships. It's based on friendships. It's based on travel the world, appreciating it at the moment, the art of living, as Thich Nhat Hanh uh, talked about. This is also a year for you to reclaim your personal power. I know that I'm going to do that. I know that after you know my years in the uh, federal service, uh, eight years in the Coast Guard, and uh, almost 14 years now with the VA, it's reclaiming my personal power and standing up for who I am and what I want to do with the remaining amount of years I have left. But it's also to remind us to not only reclaim your power, but to temper power with respect, to respect others. I think that's something that has been building for the last five or six years is the loss of respect, civility, to have conversations, to have perspective. You're entitled to your perspective. You're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your fact and making your facts over well or overtake somebody else's opinion right we see a lot of that you see that in politics you see that in religion you see that in governments um we need to reclaim the personal power but we need to temper power i think a good leader is a good follower and, and leads alongside others right and i and i i, I believe that we're going to see a more of a, a, a coming to the center especially in in, in society we're, we're going to have some we're going to still have some violence i always say that you know, especially in the political world, politics is war without violence. And I think some of the shift we've seen over the last few years that we're going to see into, 28, uh, into 2024 and year of the eight is the shift of politics is um, war without violence. War is politics with violence. I think there's a big shift that's going to take place, but that's going to help us get to that place of that abundance, that great coming together, that stepping into reclaiming our personal power um, and but also being able to respect others and have that civility 
and know that we sit at the table of life and that where you sit at one chair is a different angle and a different perspective. And I thought about this when I was in England because I was sitting with people that weren't from, uh, I take it back, there was one lady that was from uh, Boston and everybody else was from a different part of the country, different part of the world. Uh, and it was great to have the different perspectives and to agree to disagree with civility and respect for one another. I, that's the place that the year of the eight, I believe is where we're going to get to, uh, to lead alongside others. I think that, you know, a lot of times people are tired of today, whether it's the, the religious nature, the political nature, the, even your job, you have really bad leaders that don't lead. They just collect a paycheck and they expect, yeah, I think that's going to change as well. Uh, to become aware of a higher purpose. That's a huge one for me. Uh, and I hope it will be a huge one for you is to become aware of your higher purpose. It doesn't happen overnight. And I can speak to this. I can speak, uh, you know, truth to dollars on this. It does not happen overnight. I've been working on this since the age of 27 when my brothers first died and I started to question everything. My, my, uh, my reality, my mortality, my, uh, my relationships. And uh, over the course of 27, going to be 52 now, which is the year of truth, right? Five plus two is seven, which is, it re represents truth. It's, it's about becoming what is your higher purpose while you're here? Because at the end of the day, you're another day older and your greatest commodity while you're here is that time that you have. And I know moving forward for me in 2024, it's going to be really sharing that more of that time and community and energy and healing and transformations to help people. So I hope that you'll join my Patreon prospectors page. Again, the link is at marklanehart.com. Just go to the subscribe, become a member. And then here in about uh, in about 45 minutes, we're going to be opening up the Zoom room. The link is on the Patreon page. Uh, I won't put it here. Uh, that's a different Zoom link. I will put the Zoom link here in a second for those that are my uh, Diamond Hubs uh, subscribers. So let me go ahead and grab that link while I'm thinking of it. And um, copy invite link. And then I'll give you some shout outs too. Uh, but I'll be doing this the first Friday of every month for my Patreon prospectors. Um, so I hope that you'll join me at 1130 uh, a.m. Pacific Standard Time, a morning session. If you can't make the morning session, you have two opportunities, 3 p.m. Eastern or 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is about 6 Eastern, depending on where you're at in the United States or around the world. But it's a great way to have a Q&A to, um, it might, like I said, we may go, we, you know, there's no script. It may be, okay, I've got a loved one coming through from a mediumship standpoint. I've got a psychic uh, awareness that we need to talk about based on what your journey is. Uh, it could be uh, just a sound bath, like let's move into some music, let's work into some breath work, let's w work into some meditation, let's open up the third eye. There, it can be a whole slew of what is needed for you, and that's going to be, like I said, first first Fridays, 11.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. on the first Friday of each month, and I'll remind you here, and it's called the Q&A community for my Patreon prospectors, and then let me get over to Facebook real quick, and I'll put the Zoom link for my Diamonds Hub subscribers. So again, through the Intuitive Prospector page on Facebook, uh, there is a subscribe button up at, up at the top. And if, if you subscribe, it is $4.99. It's very, very cheap, uh, literally less than a cup of coffee. Um, and this way you can uh, get questions answered. You can get a reading. You can come into the Zoom room. And what I'll do is I'll get over to the... Uh, uh, the Facebook page here for you real quick uh, and put that link in. And uh, for my moderators that are moderating the page, I got a few of you. Uh, thank you again for being here and moderating the comments, making sure that we're keeping the community clean and positive and uplifting and that we're not getting trolls and click bots because we, we have been known to get that. Unfortunately, I, I'm not a big fan of it, but um, thank you uh, to those members. You know who you are uh, that show up every week uh, to hang out with me and, and help keep this a very, um, keep metaphysical meetup with Mark, a very positive social media experience. So let's get over to the Intuitive Prospector page. All right, there we are. So I hope that you'll follow me. And again, if you go up to the top of the Intuitive Prospector page, there's a little thing that says subscribers hub. That's my diamonds hub. And again, once you subscribe, that's uh, the $4.99. So let me put the, the link in here. Um, so if you want to grab that, the Zoom link is out there. The passcode is 2024. I always keep that um, uh, keep that um, link for Zoom always based on the year. So Lisa Leach, I'd love to join your group and participate. I'll put my glass. I'll put my glasses in first. <laughs> okay. Happy New Year. Hi Adriana. Hi Paula. So seeing some of you, let me go over to the phone because I can see more of the real time comments. 
Um, bear with me here. So there, there's a couple comments in here. Let me turn the volume down. Okay, so let me just give some shout outs here. And again, just we're, we're talking about um, we're talking about the year of the eight, which is about abundance, karma, manifesting. It, it literally just based on the charts, it's about your career. It's about making huge moves. Uh, but the last one is not only to become aware of your higher purpose, but to live with honesty, integrity. And uh, I think that's uh, I think that's one that a lot of us, myself included, uh, work on a daily basis is working. Integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's looking, right? Uh, but we're in such a society where it's like, you know, especially through social media and how many followers you can have and how many likes you can have. It's like, look at my integrity. Look at what I'm doing. Look at, and I see this in the spiritual community a lot. I see a lot of self-promotion. I'll, I'll be honest. I did it in, in the first part of my career. Um, I don't care to do it anymore. I just, it's more about just communicating and connecting with y'all and, and just, you know, being in the present moment and the art of living, right? As the Don Han says. So uh, let me give some shout outs to people. Um, so uh, Paula, good morning to you. Lisa Leach, uh, it says 13 other people, but I can't see the 13 other people. Lisa Leach says, curiosity is the best way to move forward in life. It is, it really is. I, I agree with you, Lisa. I, I, and I don't know where it comes from. Sometimes it's almost the curiosity is to my own demise. I'm like, why am I so curious about that? I'll, I'll look up something. I'll be even watching TV. It probably drives my wife crazy. I'll be, and I'll, I, like, I won't understand it. Okay, let me, I, I have all the information. Now, I didn't have this back in the 70s when I was born, growing up as a kid. You had to go to the library or the Encyclopedia Brown to get the information. But now we have all the information right here at our fingertips. The internet, AI is going to make that even more readable. Uh, um, and the AI of quantum computing is going to make that just even, it'll probably, we'll start to have some sort of neural link. I know that um, Elon Musk is working on neural link to where instead of actually typing physically, it'll be, you know, consciously downloaded from like the cloud, right? It's just, it's, it's going to be amazing to see where we go. Hi, Jane, Jenny Fisher. Happy new year to you, my friend. Um, happy new year. Lots of happy new years. Happy new year, everyone. Yep. 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 I love it. I love it. Love that I caught you this today. You got a beautiful mind and such a glowing spirit, Mark. It was lovely to see you. You as well, my friend. Thanks for stopping by Paula. Odeth, good morning to you. Happy new year. Good to see you back here. Hi, Christina. Good morning, Connie. Good morning to you. So a couple of you turning in, uh, like I said, the Zoom link is there if you want to come in and ask a, a Q and A. Um, in order to qualify for that now, um, you have to have a badge. So I'm looking at you know your badges. It's usually a heart shaped as a top fan, a follower, subscriber. If you're a subscriber, you actually have a green heart now. Then I know that you're a subscriber. So Facebook has uh, updated my account to where I have a blue check mark, which means I've been validated. So if you do not see a blue check mark next to my name. That is for Mark Lanehart, not the Intuitive Prospect. It's my business page. But uh, we had people two weeks ago or last week, somebody had notified me, somebody had created a fake account and they'd gotten like 70 friends. And I, that's, the, that's the thing I hate about, you know, social media too, is these fake accounts. So unless you see a blue check mark or the Intuitive Prospector, which is trademarked, um, then it's not me. Uh, then that's on my Twitter. That's on, well, I guess X now, not Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and um, Facebook. And then if, if you're interested, join my YouTube channel. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers. I'm just a few subscribers short. Once you get to a certain number, I can do more things with my YouTube channel too. Kind of like TikTok. The more followers you have, the more you can do, the more you can communicate and share, and inspire and have fun and encourage. So, all right. So let me see here. Uh, hi, Crystal. Uh, Tatum is watching. Hi, Katie. Good to see you. The pro predominant global message seems to be fear and hate, I believe. The all you need is love and hope, love and peace. Yeah, it, it is um, acceptance for what would be the norm in 2024. I agree with you, Katie. Um, it's it, there's so much fear mongering now. There's so much, and again, fear is um, what did I just say by Winston Churchill? It, it's the it's the quote uh, that I was just saying. Um, fear is a reaction. Fear is a reaction. And if you think uh, you know, if you follow my work, I teach on. Um, I'm going to be having a new uh, course coming up called Experience the Etheric to experience what I experience. I'm going to share with you the world in which I tune into and I tap into and I communicate with. I'm going to teach you. Um, I'm still working on the details, but it's called Experience the Etheric. It's about attunement, blending, and connecting the ABCs of spiritualism. Um, so if you're interested in that, let me know. 
Um, but it is, it's about moving from that fear of usually when we don't understand something, Katie, we move to that fear-based energy, right? We create our fear, whether it's a Hollywood movie, learned behavior, uh, religious dogma or concept. And it's like, I would tell you to move past that because it is that false evidence appearing real. And the media, the social media, the news cycles are so, uh, depending on which news channel you watch, you can, I, I, I say, go watch the three big channels and you'll get three different narratives, but all promoting fear, right? That's why I don't, I don't watch it anymore. I don't, I don't even tune into it. I'll tune it on just to say, see if the world's still moving around and going around, but I don't, I don't really subscribe to it like I used to, because it's just a circus. It's a show. It's an illusion. And then it triggers me to create that fear-based energy. And I'm like, I don't want to be fear-based because it is, it's false evidence appearing real, very matrix. Like whoever, whoever wrote the matrix, the, I can't remember the directors. I don't know if the directors were actually the writers and vice versa. But what a concept, what a way to bring and manifest into our reality. Like, are, is death just the unplugging of the matrix, right? Is death something, well, I definitely know that death is not the end. Death is something much more bigger than ourselves. But I hope that you would move into courage. And that's why I have encouragement in my community page, because it's about community, break the word down, community, encourage meant is to have courage to encourage you to to go past those things and use fear as as the acronym of face everything and rise because there is a lot of fear based and excuse me there's going to be a lot more in 2024 just so you know it's it's going to be interesting to watch uh, this all unfold and I, and I would say you know I always I always tell my students in my group uh, you know my spiritual development group observe don't absorb because when you absorb in that material world is constantly even when you try to turn stuff off we we're just talking with Tom my counselor about this even when we try to unplug, it's amazing how you can get it through other channels. Like I, I'll be sitting here and I'll get an alert on my phone or I'll be talking with somebody and through even my clients, I'll get that fear-based energy coming through. And so it's it's really hard to um, be constantly surrounded by all of this, right? It's like drinking from a fire hose. And so I always tell people, my students specifically, is observe it, don't absorb it. Because when you observe your reactions are much different than if you were to absorb that and then it triggers you and it, you know, then it can just send you off spiraling down, you know, a path you don't want to go down. So, all right. So the zoom link is out there. If anybody wants to come in, uh, go ahead and open it up right now for you. Hi, Misha is Monday show back. Uh, Misha, I'm not on Mondays anymore. I had to change because my, I, um, my career changed, um, after 23 years and I couldn't do it on Mondays anymore. So, the other alternative was to do it on Fridays. And so now it's Friday's meta metaphysical meetup with Mark at 10 a.m. I hope that you'll join me uh, on these Fridays. And like I said, if you miss this, you can always join my subscribers over on Patreon or the, the Diamonds Hub here on Facebook. And that'll be another way to interact with me throughout the month. Uh, so uh, like I said, here in about half hour, we're going to open up the Zoom room for my prospectors. If you want to come in and have a Q&A, questions, mediumship, healing, transformation, uh, that's the first Friday of every month now, but you have to be a Patreon member to access that. I'm going to be having the experience, the etheric, uh, sharing with people what I do and giving you the ability to experience that. Because I do believe, you know, my experience is a little bit different because mine was caused by trauma and tragedy, the TNT that blew my life up when my brothers died um, and got me to change. Uh, we call it neuroplasticity. Trauma can actually re rewire the brain to open up to something bigger. But to share with you, because I believe everybody can do this. If you have free will and choice, you may not be as good as other people, but, uh, you know, I always think of it like, you know, in anything in life, you know, um, are you as good as Kobe Bryant in basketball as Kobe Bryant was? Are you good as Beethoven in music, right? But it's about practice and application and, and awareness, right? Awareness is the greatest agent for change. And so I'm going to be doing it. It'll probably be on Mondays. That's why I'm bringing it up, Misha, is uh, it's going to be called Experience the Etheric. It's called the ABCs of Spiritualism, Attunement, Blending, Connecting. And it's connecting to something bigger than yourself. Nothing from a nefarious, scary, demonic Hollywood movie. I have not found that to be true. I've actually found that quite different than my experiences, including plant my experiences with plant medicine, um, to see how loving and connected the world really can be. It's us as humans that create all the... the the diva drama and stuff. So, hey, Nancy. Hey, Samantha Joe. Sloan, 2023 was the year of truth. What is year, what is year 2024? You probably mentioned, but I logged in late. Uh, no worries, Samantha Joe. Um, yeah, so last year was a truth. 
uh, the year of seven uh, is truth from a numerology standpoint. This year in 2024 is the year of the eight, which is about infinity. So if you take the eight, take the eight, I'll give you the visual, take the eight, turn it sideways. That becomes infinity. So this is about journey in, journey out, karma, some would call that. It's also about abundance. It's also about manifesting. A lot of things you're going to manifest, which, like I said, for 70% of the world's population, that's going to be acceptable. But for 30% of the world's population, it's not going to be, it's not going to be acceptable. And I always say 70-30 because I, I, I'm a big student of history and I go back and I read memoirs and autobiographies. And at that time, even 100, 200, 300 years ago, it would be now, I'd say within the last 300 years, because we had the Industrial Revolution, uh, that started to change technology became people became more connected more aware but if you went back 400 years 500 years maybe not 70 30 maybe 50 50 or maybe alternative of uh, <coughs> 70 not believing right but for today i always say the 70 30 concept uh 70 percent of the people just like 70 percent believe that there is something bigger than ourselves uh, extra dimensional ufos um you know, 70% is always, you know, if an alien came down today, 70% of the population, but yeah, we knew that. We're not surprised by that, right? But 30% would be like, that's the end of my world. It doesn't fit in their scripture and their religious philosophies. It would be upending for their reality, right? So, um, you know, 70%, I think, want to move forward and manifest in the year of the eight, but we're going to still see some uncomfortable things. Um, you know, we're going to continue to see war and, and famine and violence and school shootings, um, uh, we're going to see some things we've never seen before in the political spectrum. Something, I don't know, something left field is going to come uh, for that. It just doesn't seem like a Biden-Trump uh, rematch, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, I don't subscribe to politics. I'm an independent constitutionalist, so um, especially as a veteran. I took an oath as a veteran. My oath never expires to the Constitution, not to a political faction. Um, but it's, it's we're going to see some things. I think Antarctica, I did a podcast about this, that Antarctica is really going to start to unlock some big secrets. Um, our oceans, um, this, the James Webb telescope. There's a lot of things that we have the technology that's going to help us uh, reveal more of our world in, in 2024. And that's manifesting, right? It's revealing, manifesting, bringing it into our reality because, you know, your focus does determine your reality if you think about that. And when we start to manifest and bring things in through technology, like I said, whether it's James Webb telescope, quantum computing, AI, it's going to expand our consciousness to where Maybe that 96% of the scientific world we don't yet understand and can prove through mathematics or the scientific method, maybe that 4% that we do know increases to 5%, 6%, which would be um, awesome if you think about it, right? So you, you, you're thinking in terms of fourth dimensional thinking construct, two dimensional. I'm a fish in water. I just know that I'm a fish in water. Third dimensional. I'm now looking outside my aquarium. I'm actually knowing that I'm a fish breathing water, but I'm thinking about being a fish, right? So consciousness, now the fourth dimensional takes us even farther to lift the veil, if you will. And, so, and to some, that's going to sound crazy. I get it from a logical, ego, rational standpoint. Um, you know, I had to I had to wrestle with that for a couple of years myself to come to that, that understanding and that determination. So it doesn't happen overnight, right? Transformation, progression, the awakening, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, I want to awaken. It's not a fun process, y'all. It is not kitty cats and cupcakes and unicorns and rainbows every day. There are some very challenging points of the soul to where you get this, because you're going to also have people that have their opinions about you, their judgments, their, um, their, their cruelness, their unkindness about that. But that's the courage to move past that fear and what other people, it's none of your business what other people think of you anyway. It's that courage to push past and to create thicker skin, right? When you cut yourself, that's a scar, right? It hurts, right? but it heals and it becomes stronger because it's scar tissue. And we have to, we have to work through some of that scar tissue, especially if it's a, you know, family or friends, everything that I have had to go through the last, since this whole journey started for me at the age of 27. And trust me, I did not <laughs> raise my hand to say, I want to have an awakening at the age of 27 and watch my brothers and my father-in-law move into the spirit world all at the same time. That's not what I signed up for, but it's where I'm at now. And I appreciate that. So does that answer your question, Samantha? Um, Samantha Joe? It's going to be the year of abundance. It's going to be the year of manifesting. It's going to be the year of karma as well. So, all right. So, hey, Nancy. All right. Anybody else on here? Dana Anderson, hello to you. Uh, but yeah, Misha, did you catch that? So, the shows now are metaphysical meetup on uh, metaphysical meetups with Mark on Fridays. 
If you become a Patreon prospector, then the first Friday of every month, you have an opportunity to get into the Zoom room with me at 11.30 a.m. or 3 p.m. You can also, if you're a star sender here on Facebook or one of my Diamonds Hub subscribers, you go to the Intuitive Prospector page, $4.99 a month. And that also tells me as a subscriber that you, you can come into the Zoom room. And that Zoom, room, that Zoom link is in the Facebook page now. So if any of my moderators are on, um, I don't know if they are, I haven't seen them. So um, you definitely can um, come into the Zoom room. Did I not put it? Uh, let's see here. Let me put it one more time, paste. And I'll put a little, uh, my little avatar. Let's do, let's do one with champagne to celebrate the new year. And then that way you can see the Zoom link. So did that go in? There it is. Okay, so that's the Zoom link. The passcode's 2024. Uh, if you wanna come in, again, looking uh, for subscribers and you'll have a badge next to your name, anniversary follower, top fan, uh, subscriber. Um, so like Lisa Leach, uh, uh, she is a subscriber. So she has a, a green heart. So what that does is that just helps me when you get, especially if we get a show where we get a lot of people uh, on, it just helps me to identify and just personally connect with you uh, versus back when I first started this. When I, when I was, Misha, when I was doing Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, we would have like 30, 40 people and people like, can I get a card? Can I get a reading? I'm just like, by the end, after two or uh, two hours, I was just drained. And I was like, this is not a, equal exchange of energy. I love coming on social media and making them platforms for positivity and encouragement and healing and transformation, but there's gotta be an exchange because this is my time as well. And um, so, oh, hello, Mr. Simon James. Good to see you. Uh, excellent uh, uh, tutor at the Arthur Finley College and has a uh, church up in Victoria. So good to see you. I think that's the same Simon James. Let me click on the name. Maybe I just uh, totally misreferenced you. I apologize if I did. Uh, they wrote a great book, actually. Um, it's funny because, uh, Simon, if, if you're on, if you're okay with talking about that, we were just talking about this in group on Wednesday, uh, Magician to the Mystic. We were actually, uh, we were making some references uh, to this uh, about the journey of, of mediumship and spirituality, and uh, especially to, in today's mediumship, but, you know, especially in the United States. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people just, you know, hang their shingle and say, I'm a medium and don't put in the work and the accreditation and the, the practicalities and it, it, there's a lot to it so good to see you Simon hope you're doing well um, happy new year to you all right so um, if there's nobody else any other questions or no zoom room um, Jane are you still on did I remind me refresh my memory are you a moderator did you want to still be a moderator I know um, Lou and Colleen are Reg. If you're on, I don't know if you're on. If you want to be added back as a moderator, let me know. We had to make some updates to the page, um, and plus, it just you know when when you have moderators on the page, it just helps because I don't see all of your comments all real time. Sometimes that's based on Facebook's algorithms, but I have moderators on the page to keep the page positive and clean. Uh, if you get something from somebody that says, "Hey, go to my page to get a more accurate reading," please don't do that. They're going to be they're going to be escorted out of the community page and banned for coming back because that's just like a spam call on your cell phone right when you get a spam call it's like come on that's not what this this not what this community is about we're about connecting and, and inspiring encouraging and motivating and healing and transforming we don't need people coming in trying to compete saying oh you can get a better reading on my page just don't do that read the rules and 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 you know abide by them because my moderators do watch that and they they do moderate for trolls uh, if you have, if you don't have anything nice to say, as my grandma used to say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Uh, you, you know, you move in, you become bullying or unkind. The moderators pick that up, and there's those three little dots, and each of you can do this. You can always report them to Facebook, and also let the administrators and myself know so we can keep them off the page. But that's one of the beauties of AI. I know people are worried about AI, but AI is going to start cleaning up misinformation, disinformation cognitive uh, dissonance, uh, conscious bias is where people, you're, like I said, you're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your fact. And people are going to be like, that's censoring me. No, you, you can, you have a responsibility with your word. And that's what AI is going to start flagging from a technology standpoint to what you're getting is actual truth, not somebody's opinion. Just like I can't go onto a plane. I have, I have my free will and my choice to choose my words carefully, just, you know, and I'm supported even by the constitution of the first amendment, right? 
but I have responsibilities where I can't go on a plane and yell bomb. I can't go into a movie theater and cause panic to get somebody injured or killed. So there's responsibilities to our language and our words and words matter. And that's where I think AI is going to start to really see a positive aspect, especially in the social media, because we didn't always have social media, right? The internet came in the late nineties, 97, I think April or March of 97. And then we started to slowly in 2010, I believe we started to have, you know, social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And through that, there was really no regulations. It was kind of a wild, wild west. And that's where it's created a lot of social conscious divide. And I think that technology, which is the new religion of today in our roaring 20s, is going to clean that up to where technology, be, we're going to have to work through our technology aggression of misunderstanding and understanding because it's a, it's a tool that we've never had before in our history. And there's more tools coming with AI, robotics, quantum computing, we're going to have to work through those as well. So, all right. Who else is on here? Tara, good morning. Hey, Rafe. Good to see you. Hijacking followers is big no bueno. Yeah, I agree with you, Lisa. No bueno here. Uh, I'm not, but I can be. Uh, think about it, Jane, if you want to. I just need to add you so you can, if you're on, on Fridays with me, it just it helps just have an extra pair of eyes to keep the community clean and, and, and upbeat and inspiring and, and you know that kind of thing. So if you do want to be a moderator on the Intuitive Prospector page, let me know. Um, good to see you. Hi, Amy, man. Have a wonderful day as well. Um, happy New Year to all of you. Uh, we're going to get ready for, uh, again, the Patreon prospectors. You can get the link here at marklaneheart.com. First Friday of every month, I'll be opening up the Zoom rooms for direct readings and Q&A with me. Um, that'll be over. Um, it'll be here through Zoom. It won't be here through the Facebook page. Uh, if you want to follow my YouTube channel, the, the show uh, will go live at 10 o'clock um, when I'm live here. There's another show that goes live over there. That's going to be something I'm doing. I'm back on the air for Inspired Living, our eighth season uh, for um, over on Ohm Times. Again, all the links are at marklaneheart.com. I cannot remember who our first guest is. I, actually, I do uh, because it's on my calendar. Uh, it's going to be a gentleman that we talked with last year, Ralph Kilman, and he uses this technique called the Kil Kilman technique. And it was so fascinating that we ran out of time because I only have an hour on the air. Um, I do two shows a month um, and we ran out of time. So I'm bringing him back so we can continue to talk about this because again, the year of the eight, 2024 is manifesting technology, uh, quantum consciousness expansion. And so we're going to be talking with Ralph uh, on the 10th. So next Wednesday, we'll be back for the first show of the year. And then uh, back on the 24th, <clears throat> which uh, uh, I'll be doing my show based on uh, my predictions and forecasting for 2024 in the year of the eight. And then we have some other guests already booked out. We're already well into March and April for Inspired Living. So if you get bored, you can always find Inspired Living wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Uh, at run run uh, almost every major platform now you can even ask uh, alexa to open up inspired living um, podcast and that'll that'll play the latest episode or you can say uh, into your echo or alexa uh, open up positive living and you'll get uh, spiritual tips that i've recorded I'm, i've got five new ones i'm going to be recording uh, this month and um, yeah i think that's about it for today Again, today's message, I, I know there's a lot of uncertainty in our world. I feel it. I talk with my clients about it. Um, I, I can uh, see it. And like I said, you know, I was watching that show, Leave the World Behind. It's, it's it really a question of, is art imitating life or is life imitating art? And, and our focus is determine our reality. But fear is a reaction, y'all. And there's a lot of things in our material world that drive it. The, you're a physical being. You're an emotional being. You're a mental being, but you also live in a material world, but you're also a spiritual being. You're a spiritual being first that incarnated to have the physical experiences. So remember that you're not just a physical flesh suit working a nine to five job to buy shit you can't take with you, right? So remember, it's what I teach on the pens, the physical, the emotional, the mental, the material, and the spiritual, because the material world is filled with fear. And it's, it's based to trigger you. It's based to get you to, to buy stuff. It's getting you based to do things that you normally wouldn't do, right? So again, when, you're, you feel, when you feel or see or become aware of that fear, tell yourself to observe it, don't absorb it. Because then you're moving into courage. And courage is a decision. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. And that's by the famous Sir Winston Churchill. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Happy New Year to all of you. Thanks for hanging out with me here 
uh, today on the Intuitive Prospector page. Um, I will see you next Friday uh, for another show. Hi, Barbara. Um, Tara saying hello all. Um, I'll be back next Friday for another metaphysical meetup with Mark. I'll try not to call it metaphysical mocha Mondays like I did when I started. Uh, again, I'll have to get more coffee, I guess. And um, if you want to be a Patreon prospector and subscribe to my uh, my membership, uh, you, you've got a couple different ones from $2.22 to $11.11 .11 every month and has different benefits in between. Uh, you get that link here and I'll uh, maybe I'll put it in the Facebook page here. Let me just go do it real quick just since I've been talking about it. I don't have the, um, Patreon, Patreon. it's pretty much patreon.com, my name, Mark Wayne Hart, but I'll, I'll just put it in the comment section if, you, if you're interested in joining, or you can go to um, top of the page and hit the subscribe button on the Intuitive Prospector page and become a Diamond Sub subscriber. So that's really how I'm moving forward in 2024. Um, and I didn't get any, hi, Ben. I didn't get any other questions asked from any of the uh, followers here. So I will take that as, um, all right, Lisa, thanks for subscribing. Let's see how quickly Facebook updates. Yeah, no, you have a badge, Lisa. So thanks for subscribing. So be like Lisa and subscribe and become a Diamonds Hub subscriber. And then every Friday at 10 a.m. on Metaphysical Meetup with Mark or over on my YouTube channel, you can get interactions with me. Or you can always book a direct reading if you want at marklinghart.com. I'm already booking out. Uh, people know I take the month of December off to shut down everything and step away. And so I'm getting <laughs> busy to where I'm going to be booked out for this month, moving into the next month. But love to work with you. Love to help you on your journey. Love to help you find that diamond within. And uh, again, Happy New Year, the year of the eight. I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the 1130 uh, Zoom room for my Patreon prospector. So if you are a Patreon member, uh, please join me at 1130. And if you can't make that session, I'll be on, online again at 3 p.m. And keep your eyes out for um, the, the experience, the etheric. Uh, it's going to be uh, probably Monday afternoons is what I'm thinking if I can make that work. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I do have some new music queued up for us. So um, I just got to get it over and loaded in my playlist. I have not done that, um, but I will uh, when I can. And let's take us out with the friend song. So, all right. Uh, let me just double check comments one last time. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Carol. Good to see you, Carol. Hope you're doing well. Happy New Year. All right. So no other questions. Um, so I will leave it there. Have a great rest of your uh, Friday. Have a great rest of your weekend, first weekend of uh, January. And uh, as I always like to say, until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. And most importantly, wherever you're at right now, today, in the moment, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. And I hope that you'll discover that diamond within. And we'll see you next time here on Metaphysical Meetup with Mark. Take care. Namaste. By four, you were knocking on my door. I said, Love is a two way road. He don't care no more. Am I going crazy? Needed you just to help forget it all. And it was easy. You put the records on to replay. Dance till we couldn't see straight. Till the morning came.
one planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector.